I'm on my way to view a 30-year collection of Mercedes parts and repair equipment that belongs to a retired Mercedes mechanic that's worked for years on these cars. I don't know what I'm going to find, but from the pictures I have seen, this could be a one-of-a-kind discovery. I'm excited to get to his warehouse. This is what all die-hard car enthusiasts live for. Okay, we've just arrived at what I'm going to call the Mercedes Cave in a very secretive location in the Portland area. This place is amazing. It's full of parts, equipment, old Mercedes. And if you're a Mercedes lover and you like these old cars, you're going to love following me along on this adventure. We're inside the cave. You got to see these shelves. They're packed high to the ceiling with parts and Mercedes parts. Endless parts. Take a look. Can you believe that? Wow, what's in this bucket here? Look at this. Mercedes boxes. Those are genuine Mercedes spark plugs. And man, look at these. What, what could be hiding down here? Oh, look, we've got engines. Look at that engine over there. We've got a, a 617 turbo diesel. There's some more diesel stuff back in there. The owner just informed me that he has 85 Mercedes diesel engines in this warehouse. Hey, look, look at what we got back in this box. Anybody know what these are? These are for wind, windshield washer squirter motors. Look at this. He says he's got hundreds of these babies. Wow. You know, I just discovered these cabinets. Take a look. Look at these cabinets. All in roller bearings. Can you believe? I'm going to pull the drawers out. Look what we got in here. Sprockets for oil pump drive. Look at that. Cad plated, collar nuts, freeze plugs, bolts. We're talking, whoa, look at the brackets in there. If any of you guys are 617 or 616 diesel owners, you know what we're looking at right here. We're talking small treasure here. You think I'm excited? I am. Hey, look at these, look at these cylinder heads. He's got cylinder heads uh, off V8s, four cylinder, six cylinder, all the way back in the, in the 1960s. And, do we, does anybody out there need a brake rotor? Uh, look at this cage full of rotors. And then what about these, these uh, diesel auxiliary fuel tanks? Man, these are really cool. These were something that was produced as an aftermarket product back in the 1980s. And then let's, let's come on over here. I see a big box here and it says combi on it. I don't know if we've got combi parts or something. Let's see what's in here. Okay, come on, come on, zoom in here. Look at that. An instrument cluster. That's out of a 202 chassis. Uh, he, the owner just informed me that he has 1,400 instrument clusters in these boxes going down the shelves here. Wow. You know, I never really wanted to become a transmission expert, but if, if I haul these transmissions home, I'm going to have to do something with it. He's got transmissions, once again, for cars all the way from the 60s up to the 1990s. And this is only the beginning of the piles of transmissions that he has. Hey, look what I found over in this corner. I hope he's not watching because I'm actually acting more excited than I need to be. Uh, um, so I'm hoping he's not listening. But look at this. This is a uh, ready-to-go rebuilt block for a 617 turbo diesel. And just look at the quality here. Look at the, the honing in the cylinder walls, ready for new pistons. Come on, take a look. You know, I came back in this back corner and I found these two racks full of parts and I could immediately tell most of this stuff is early diesel. And look at this, we've got, we've got fuel filter housings, we've got motor mount arms, we've got oil filter housings here, fan clutches, look at this. Water pump housings. Now these go bad, you know that's a real find there. And on this shelf, oh man, look at this. We've got pistons, rings, we've got fans, fan clutches. There's stuff all over here. You've probably noticed we've got boxes everywhere and these are big boxes. Let's take a look at what's in this one. It says Euro parts on the outside, but I'm gonna open that. To look at this. We have all brand new, genuine Mercedes parts, new carpets. New floor pans, new, new plastic panels. And it goes on and on down here. Look at this. 
We got door trim. This is unbelievable. You know, as we walk down these aisles, and there's about six of them like this, we just have boxes and boxes of stuff, and, and we have engines and transmissions, and we have seat springs, and there's a whole bunch of brand new seat paddings up there. We have wheels. And moving on down here, I don't even know where to begin to look in all this stuff. A lot of it has brand new Mercedes parts tags on it. And then moving down to this lower rack, we've got three good used 603 turbo diesel engines here. But you can see the enormity of the shelving in this picture. Uh, and there's boxes and boxes everywhere. I mentioned engines. You couldn't see them all. Some of them were literally buried uh, under cardboard. And then, of course, I didn't even get a chance to mention all the engine parts, things like injection pumps and crankshafts, bell housings, and all kinds of other parts that go with both gasoline and diesel engines. And then I mentioned the cabinets. Look at the shot of these Mercedes cabinets. These were all picked up from Mercedes dealers on the West Coast. And this is only about a third of the cabinets. He has three car lifts, he has carts, he has steam cleaning equipment, he has sun electronic equipment, he has Bosch fuel injection equipment, and it just goes on and on and on. And he has things like a wash tank and a sandblasting cabinet. Uh, you could literally start your own shop by just acquiring the tools and equipment that he has in this warehouse. Okay, I've given you a quick look into the cave. This is probably the only place like this in the entire United States. And this is just a glimpse. So, you know, I can't do any more today. I gotta head back to Bellingham. But hopefully in the future, I can get back and show you more of the treasures that are found in this old warehouse. Stay tuned. Uh, we're just entering the bridge that crosses the Columbia River. So in a few minutes here, we'll be back in Washington State and heading north. I'm sure some of you who have been watching this video are asking, well, Kent, where is this cave located and how do I get some of these parts? Well, at this point, I can't, I can't give you an answer. For one thing, the owner wants privacy, so I cannot divulge the location. And as far as part sales or parts available, I have no idea how we're even going to pull this off. But you can stay tuned for future video announcements and other adventures where we may be going back to Portland to take another look at the cave.